All right, welcome back. Uh, so I ran uh, I ran it a little differently. I, you know, I had to go back and create the, uh, the space time cube first. Now, the space time cube that's getting created uh, is it's it created, created in a format that's called a net CDF. And as I kind of mentioned offhand before, RGIS doesn't actually read net CDFs right into it by default. There is a way to get it in there, uh, but uh, there is a make net CDF layer. Uh, but I have no idea if this would actually work to bring it in. It's not a it's not a native ArcGIS format. It's a, actually a format for uh, it's actually a format for um, for having multiple uh, representations of data through multiple dimensions. It doesn't even have to be like here. Our dimensions are x and y, the math plus z, okay, the time, the time period. So I, I had to rerun that and created it. And uh, like I said, this is a new tool in here. And then I, when I created it, I, I read, actually did 50 mile hexagons. So all those uh, hexagons I created were 50 miles. Then I ran the emerging hotspot analysis. <coughs> and I went and looked at the help. And uh, emerging hotspots analysis is, oops, here's the, uh, no, I, I did, I did it here. Here's the help. Here's the uh, description of it. And um, it's actually running the Guinness ORG, the, the, uh, the hotspots analysis. Remember the 95% confidence, 90%. So it's, it's right. showing you what areas are high and what areas are low. So it's running that analysis through time. So it runs it for the first I, in this case, I, I did it again. The second time I did it, I did it every three years. So every three years, you get whether or not it's it's basically whether or not it's a hot spot or whether or not it's a cold spot. And I'm not exactly sure where they make the cutoff, and maybe you can specify what the cutoff is. It doesn't look like it though. So my guess is it's it's probably at the 90% cutoff. So you can imagine through time, every three years you have, is it a high a hot spot? Is it a low spot? I mean, is it a hot spot? Is it a cold spot? Is it not significant? So you got red, white, or, or blue. Red, white, or blue. Um, so uh, then what it does is it looks through time at the, at the different values. And here is a more complete description of all the different colors that it's showing. So for example, a new hotspot, it actually, to be a new hotspot, the very last time period had to be a hotspot. So location that's that is statistically significant hotspot for the final time and has never been a statistically significant hotspot before. So in other words, if we go back to this map, I don't even know if we have any here. Probably because we selected so many time steps that there was always one time it had been a statistically significant hotspot. <clears throat> so none of them match that criteria. In fact, it doesn't look like any of them are new cold spots either. All right, we do have the consecutive hotspot. The consecutive hotspot means that um, a single uninterrupted run of statistically significant hotspot bins, including the final time. So the final time and a number before that. So that's what these are right in here, right in that. Actually, that looks like a lot of South Mississippi, including where we are. There's a, a statistically a consecutive hotspot right, right, right at the end, which, uh, yeah. I, I got, I, a tornado actually uh, came through my, I got a new roof from a tornado a couple of years ago, 2017 tornado that hit William Carey. <laughs> Uh, hit my ass too, but uh, that's just anecdotal. But we can see from here that there is a consecutive hotspot. Now we know there's been a few recently. All right, um, I'm not going to go through all of these, but you can go read the help. Intensifying hotspot means that there has to be a trend upward. It, it means that it doesn't necessarily have to be a, a single run at the very end. 
That's what a consecutive hot spot is. Intensifying just means that it has to be getting more and more hot over time. You could collapse these down. So like, for example, we could make those the same color, intensifying and consecutive, because they mean similar things, right? In fact, I would say that all of the consecutive are intensifying, but not necessarily all the intens <laughs> intensifying consecutive means that they have to all be next to each other, and the very last one has to be. Persistent hotspots, uh, there's no noticeable trend, but they're like always hot. So that's kind of interesting that, you know, uh, that area right there. Uh, anyway, you can go through that over time and, and see. What are those brittle-looking spots? Brittle ones in northeast? Um, the Chicago area? The, these? How about Chicago area? The Chicago area? Right yep, the Chicago area is an oscillating hot spot. So if we go down to, uh, that's, that's this one right here. So it's a statistically significant hot spot for the final time step that has a history of also being statistically a significant cold spot during the prior during a prior time step. So, um, so just the last one was hot, but before that, um, the majority of them were cold. Does that make sense? Yes. Okay. So that's what that that's what that is. And then the the ones that are the ones that are white are the opposite. Like these that are that are uh, patterned are the opposite of those. Where it was, I'm sorry, these are the opposite of those. These these are uh, different. These are sporadic hotspots. In other words, they were hotspots a lot, but not every single time, or not even close to being persistent. So can you say they sometimes similar, sometimes they're not, but they stay close? Sometimes they're similar, sometimes they're yeah. Well, now we're looking through we're looking through lots of variables, and and uh, I, I actually did notice this tool when I was preparing to teach this class this year, uh, but uh, I didn't. Originally, I wasn't going to talk too much about it, but now now I do. So uh, you could replicate this the same thing by writing a script, but it's nice that it's all in there. And then the, the other tool that, that works that I ran um, is this one right here. <clears throat> this one is basically doing the Anselin uh, Moran, local Moran's eye through time. So what this shows you is that for tornadoes, the kind of darkest color on there, the, uh, I don't know, what color would you call that, purple? Purple. The purple uh, means that there, the, there are multiple types. And when it did lots of different things. Okay, not very descriptive. But um, most of it is purple. The, <clears throat> the pink means that it was only high, high clusters. In other words, through time, it was always a high, high. Which means that it's a pretty intense tornado location. Uh, the red, the dark reds, mean that it was always, through time, a high-low cluster. That's pretty weird. That basically, this was this particular dot was always right on the edge of there being tornadoes and no tornadoes. But it, it was high itself, but it was always surrounded by lows. It's kind of kind of weird. And then these are the opposite. These are lows that were always surrounded by highs. Yeah. Well, this. Oh, all these? Yeah, well, certainly. Yeah, I mean. Yeah. And of course, those will look totally different. Like, what if we only had three time steps? Then there'd be a whole lot less multiple types. Why are there those certain gaps on the west coast? Like where you can see the coast right now, there's not nothing happening. Yeah, I, I, I don't think those. I don't know why. Why would why would that be different than never significant? But 
I'm pretty sure those are never significant. I don't know why they show up as white. I mean, why do they don't show up as white? See what I'm saying? Like the... Yeah, 1950. This is every three years since 1950. I think the data is 2017 data, but we could get the 2019 data. But yeah, I, I think that the these are zeros. No, no tornadoes occurred. Yeah, yeah. I mean, you could see by overlaying the tornadoes themselves that they they just never happened there. <laughs> I'm not sure a lot of people live in any of these locations, right? I mean. And that's another thing is that, you know, well, I'm sure I'm sure that with tornadoes, there's a way nowadays to measure it. But in 1950, I don't know if there was a, a, a reliable way to measure where tornadoes were, except for by actually being there, right? Or, or seeing some evidence. And that, that assumes that a human... Uh, Witnessed it or reported it. Yeah, well, I, I came upon it. Like it some of these areas, like out in, out in the middle of these forests, like right here, you know, they could have a tornado, but nobody ever saw the damage because it's just out there in the middle of nowhere. So there's a big problem with with, with lots of data like this. You know, like let's say, well, I have another data set in here that's uh, Canadian geese observations. So does Canadian geese observations mean that that's where the Canadian geese were? Well, not necessarily, because to be observed, you have to be seen by humans. So you're going to see more observations where there's more people. And I think that this tornado data set uh, probably has some, although particularly in the later years, hopefully not as much, uh, but it probably has some um, issues with, uh, with being, being influenced by population itself. This one hexagon in Mexico? Right. So I don't know why. The, the, like the, the reason that there is a hexagon in Mexico is because there's a tornado point in Mexico. But the better question then is why is there a tornado point in Mexico? I don't know why. But there is. So, so the reason why there's a hexagon is because there's a tornado point. If you can tell the Michigan area, there's a water body. You can see no observation of the water body. Uh, see that, is that the, uh, great lakes? Right, 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 right. So, yeah, there's no, it, this hexagon, normally, we could, okay, so tornadoes can occur over water, they're called water spouts, but, but my guess is that a lot less of them are recorded over water because there's not as many people there to re right. record them, plus they damage you know, there's not as much damage. So anyway, we're kind of getting into the, the the details of this analysis, but right. We could hypothesize all day long, though, about why these things happen. But that's just basically it's because the data is that way. Right. That's the point I'm trying to get across. Okay. So let's look at. Um, I'm not gonna, we're not going to be here too much longer. I, was, I told this to a few of the students, but because of, a, because of a weird connection, I didn't get to Dallas last night. I was supposed to go through Chicago, but that flight got canceled. So I didn't get to Dallas till like 2.30 in the morning. I didn't sleep much. But um, So we'll, we'll just talk about this lab, and uh, I'll be around to answer questions, uh, but we won't spend a whole lot of time. Okay, so this is 417, and uh, we're now on this week. And here's the lab. Okay. So this is the point 
and area spatial autocorrelation analysis. Okay, so hopefully you don't have to do this again because I told you to do it again last week. But if you saved all your data, you should have this. So you got your 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 hexagon monthly tornado sets again. Uh, oh, one thing I was going to mention is that one of the weaknesses with this is that you can only this analysis only lets you break it up by time, like real time. So in other words, you can't group all of the Marches and all the Mays and all the Februarys that we did, we did before. Now, there is a way that you can like trick it. So you could basically remove all the years, right? Like let's just say we remove the years or made all the years 1950, then you could create the space time cube and do it by month. So you could, you could work around it. Anyway. Just wanted to make that point, but uh, all right. So, so what we're going to do? You're going to make your monthly tornado sets again. Um, I don't have the hexagon ones, but again, I do have the uh, the points already monthed out in the data. This is this link is the same link as last week. It's the same data set, so you don't have to download that again if you don't want to. Okay, so what you're going to do is you're going to perform a spatial autocorrelation, global Morant's eye, on each of the data sets month to month. So they're already made, in case you don't have them, uh, but uh, but do that. So did the global Morant's eye value change month to month? So in other words, January, February, March, April, you already did this for the, the ANN analysis, the average nearest neighbor analysis. Now you're going to do it for global Morant's eye. I don't know why I said finally here, because it's not the last one. <laughs> but it is the last part of this question. So you're going to do a, this is the last tornado thing you're going to do. Maybe that's why I meant finally. So then you're going to do a cluster analysis um, and a hotspot analysis of the tornadoes just for the month of June. So you're going to make a cluster and a hotspot for... Uh, for June only. Okay. So all the Junes through all years, but uh, then use the uh, you know, use the tessellated hexagons, make a map of it for uh, for both clusters and hotspot. The uh, hotspot is the also called the um, the uh, the get us G, the local get us G, and this is the local more anti. <clears throat> All right. So then uh, you're going to interpret that by writing up three or four sentence summary of the trends you noticed. So that's for question two. So in other words, what areas have hotspots? What do those hotspots mean? This isn't through time. This is just in June. What areas have cold spots? Is, is it significant? June? Yeah, go ahead. Is this June based on the years, like uh, 1950 June, 1951 June, or just June? All the Junes. Okay. Yep. So June is the sixth month. So in this data set here, oops, I add data. I already have June's tornadoes created in the data set. So if you download it, Right here, six. There's all there's all the Junes, and so you're gonna you're gonna tag that to hexagons again doing a spatial join if you don't already have it. If you have it, that's great, but um, you're gonna do a spatial join to get those into the hexagons, um, and then use this hexagon data set. And then, once you do that, then run the global Morant's eye on it, run cluster and hotspots, and, uh, and, and interpret the results. So what I want in the interpretation is like maybe a sentence on, on uh, what it looks like, where the hotspots are, and the, uh, the, like, tell me if it's significant and what that means if it's significant. All right. <clears throat> Next, you're going to take the county healthy rate, rankings data, 
And we already did this in class, but you're just going to run it again on the percent of each field, making a map of the clusters and the hotspots. So you're going to do that. You're, you do that yourself um, and interpret the results. Is it random? Is it dispersed? No, we already know the, the answer to that, right? All right. So this part we already pretty much did in class. But then what you're going to do is you're going to, you're going to have to do it yourself, though, and write it out. Then you're going to choose two more variables of your choosing and do a global Morantz cluster and hotspot analysis of the percent obese field, make a map of the clusters and the hotspots. So there's two maps here that you have to make. There's two maps here you have to make. And then there's two maps here you have to make. Okay. There's no maps here because you're running uh, um, global Moran's eye. So there's one, two, three, four, five, six maps. Okay. Finally, you're going to interpret the results of those. And then here I do want you to comment on any trends or similarities you see between the three different variables you analyzed. One of them is obesity. Okay. So you could... You could um, you can explore the data first before you decide which ones you want to do. I can turn off all these layers. What layer should I? Oh, there it is. Okay, so I've got my county health rankings down here. And I could decide, well, maybe I'm going to see what the other category is are. So we've got uh, driving deaths. Wow. Man. I'm glad I moved out of Southern California there. Of course, you probably have to normalize that by population. It looks like those are just raw numbers. Uh, okay, percent uninsured. Wow. Yeah, what's up with Texas and what's up with Kentucky like and Illinois? They don't need, like, like, that data looks suspect that it's so defined by the county boundary, but, um, I mean, the, the state boundary. So what's the value here? Oh, they're all, uh, it'd, be, it'd be hard to find. Okay, so, um, yeah, you could do that. Uh, diabetes. So maybe diabetes would be correlated, maybe, with uh, the hotspots would be in the same place, but it doesn't, well, that's just raw counts. So you could divide that by um, divide that by people. Now you got smokers. Let's look at that. Well, it looks like it might be related a little bit. Well, not related, but it it looks like those clusters are in similar locations as obesity. You've got uh, fair poor health. Those are, the, those, are, those are people that reported having fair or poor health. Um, percent low birth rate. It's kind of... Anyway, you, you can look, uh, look around. Percent female. That one might be one that would be interesting to see if... Because, right, percent female, hopefully that's not clustered, right? Uh, well, not hopefully. I, I, I don't know. Um but uh, it'd be it'd be weird if that was clustered, right? Because people are kind of all over the place. So, um, yeah, spatial statistics. So, how I answer if they are clustered? I mean, sorry, yeah, I just answered if they're clustered or if they're dispersed in general. That's the global Moran's eye. So I can run county health rankings. And say percent female. Which, by the way, most of the time, one minus percent female would be the percent male if we wanted to find that. Okay. Look at that. The Z score is still pretty high. So they. They are statistically significant, although not quite as statistically significant as other things, but still off the charts. Okay, clustered. That's kind of weird at the county level, 
But maybe, uh, you know, in some places you get uh, a little bit more females or what's more likely is you get more males running, uh, uh, migrating to certain locations, right? Like Washington, Wyoming or something where you have a lot of people. Everybody works in the oil industry has to be able to hire yeah, look at look at this. Like right through here, we have a very low female count, and that that is oil and and wind, right, right, right through there. So, uh, and then these are probably big. Uh, uh, my guess is they're big bases, um, which tend to have a little bit. I don't, I don't know, but that's just my guess. So then we might want to say, well, where are they? Well. Um, what's that? Oh yeah, right. Well, that's um, that's yeah, that's kind of uh, yeah. I don't know why that would be. Is there any? So then we might want to uh, to look at um, there's the high low clustering, which is only going to show us highs and lows, not highs next to lows or lows next to highs. But we got uh, percent female. Well, those are just going to tell us whether or not we've got highs or lows. Remember, it's not going to map it. So it, it's actually the high clusters are are more are more clustered than the than the lows, which means the female dominated places. Yeah, it looks like there's a ton of those, right? I mean, looks like there's very little. Okay, so now we could go to the clustering analysis. Here's the here's the two clustering analysis that we talked about. Input field percent female. All right, these are these are cold spots for females, which which is the what I noticed, right? And then these are like hot spots for female. Look at that. East coast. East coast, and then into the. Um, yeah, it's interesting. So those are those are hot spots. So you could, I mean, you could still do this one even though I did it, but. Uh, those would be things to check. And then this will this will say where the where the highs and the lows are nearby each other. So these are the three analyses that you have to run. So you see that. Oftentimes, the ones that are light red will be the ones that are, I mean, not oftentimes, by definition, those will be the ones that are red. Now we have the slide that showed the same thing. And then the ones that are blue will be the ones that are light blue in this analysis. See that? With, with some little exceptions. But. Yeah, I, I get the, this one. But it's hard for me to wrap my head around why the to explain why these areas are are clusters for higher percents of females. Oh. I maybe I guess so. Yeah. So. see what those those values were because maybe you know maybe it's maybe mathematically they're just slightly higher like 
51 percent or something like that. That's yeah, they're like, but it's still it's 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 a pattern that exists. You know, why are these just even if they are only slightly below? Why is it thicker? I mean, it's pretty strong. I mean, it's a pretty strong. It's a pretty striking cluster. It's not like just like a little like area out in the middle of nowhere. Um, anyway, so that's uh, that's that, and I don't. I don't think we need to, to do anything else unless you all have questions. What's that, Elvis? Did you have a question? No, I guess I'm going to I read the other thing. That's a pretty interesting map because you can see trains and it's interesting to try to understand it. You've got to put a lot of the stuff into try to come up with an analogy of what those things do. Right. Yeah, I, uh, I I had never run the percent females before, so I, I didn't know what it would look like. I don't even know if they have percent male in there. Um, but yeah, it should be. Yeah. I, yeah. I could prob I can look back up the the uh, the where I got this data and uh, and and find that out. Yeah, mentally unhealthy day. I don't know. I mean, I I don't even know how they get that. Like, do do people like when you call in sick? Do people report? I'm I'm sick because. Of something, they must get it through sampling of some somehow, right? Because they can't they can't track every single person's reason why they took a sick day, right? Yeah, I mean it's always it's always important to track down. Exactly what your data is telling you and how they get the how they got the data. Um, this is just a data set that had a bunch of that variables that I thought would be interesting to, to do this on, but I I didn't uh, didn't get all the details on every single one. I think this this data set's available. I don't know if it would give us any better. Um, Information, but I do think this data set is available on RTIS online. But and it might give us some better information there. So you, by the way, you guys can all—I don't know if you know this—but you guys can all get on RTIS online. This is RTIS online here, uh, and uh, you can go to Map, and you have access to the data that's available here. So there are two sets of data that RTIS has. Um, if you say uh, browse for living atlas, then that is uh, all of the data that they have available that pertains to the earth. So I hit living atlas, and I might be able to search for county health rankings. There's 2019. I did that. So that doesn't look like counties, but maybe lots of times when you zoom in, yes, the, da the data is aggregated automatically for you with this uh, this data set. Now I could do the same sorts of things. I, I can't actually run all the tools, but uh, I could make a map uh, back under details. I'll get back to content. There you go. So here's my county uh, details. I can, uh, and I can, I'm, I can change the symbology somewhere in here. Got to change style. There we go. So I can pick one of these variables. 
Uh, we had adult ob obesity percentage. So I'm, I, I just made a map of Why does it not let me choose that? Do I have to hit apply somewhere? Is there a way to access that living atlas information from ArcGIS Pro itself? Yes. Yep. In fact, uh, I can do that. Because um, that way it's easier to uh, to analyze. So, yeah, if you're logged in using your, your university account, our living atlas data isn't free, uh, but it is for us. So you hit add data, and then under portal, you've got living atlas. So you could go county, health, I think it was rankings. So there's the 219 data. I can add it. There it is. So this layer that I just added, and turn off these other layers. That layer, okay, so nothing's showing up at that scale. The only problem is it's still a problem, but it's still data from um, the Internet. So they decide, like, when it displays. So when I'm zoomed out at a certain level, it just doesn't display it. It's still coming from the Internet, too, so it's taking a few seconds. There it comes. But once you have it, you can put it into the analysis tools. Processing, and then you can control the output of that. Yeah. Yep. In fact, you could right click on this guy. Let's see, that's the one that's on right now. You could right click on that guy and say data export features, and then you could save it. So I'm going to put this right in my, my drive. Uh, I'll call this uh, county health ranking. I'll run it, and it's, it's right in my project directory. And it's, it's a copying it off of the internet. So now I'll have it. It'll be in, uh, probably be in, let's, I don't know, probably be in Web Mercator. But since the map is changing, it might be pulling it down in the same one. It's going to take, a, it's going to take quite a while. It's going to take a lot. So <clears throat> what you're actually seeing right here is a picture of the data. You notice how it came in and kind of like intervals and they're, they're tiled. It's actually a picture of the data that's coming through. This is actually downloading all of the individual vertices and all the tabular data when it's saving out of the disk. So when I, if I made a change to the symbology here, if you the color pink, uh, you change the color. Yeah. If I make a change to the symbology, you know, I, I go back and even if I choose not unique values. Colors. There's total population. This one has a lot more things, it looks like. The 2019 data. I think mine's 2017. So this is the teen birth rate. Uh, anyway, um, the last thing I was, I forgot to mention, I think it did finally save. So now I could use it faster. But here, I go to search for layers. I forgot to show this part. But if you go, oh, sorry, search for a loving atlas. When you get a layer like this, you can, you can click on it. And then if you go down to... View summary. No, that's for the whole thing, isn't it? There is a way. Oh, it's this one. Oh, no, that's just going to take you to there. Oh, what's that guy right there? View full image details. So this will give you a whole uh, page on the description. And if there is any hope as to what the individual layers mean, the individual data layers mean then then they'd be in there um, so the mental health uh, that would be a, if, if it was there it would be in that section
Anyway, I don't, I don't see it. Alright. Any other questions? It's a 700 level. Oh, the 500 level yeah. I'm teaching? Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, no, no. You're right. Sorry. Because I, 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 I referenced another class in this lecture. Yeah. So I, that, that yeah. class, that's why I got confused. Okay. Yeah. The class I'm teaching is uh, it's, it's spatial analysis, so it's raster okay. analysis, and uh, focused on uh, like terrain data. So we. we you know, like net, we did network analysis, mm -hmm. and we'll do uh, like water flowing on the Earth, and we do uh, temporal modeling and uh, least cost path modeling over a surface. Mm -hmm. um, cover uh, you know, just just basic operations, like if you want. It's almost like image processing routines, but mm -hmm. kind of the basics of image processing. Routines. We start we start there. But it's that. still on GIS. And yeah, it's on okay. GIS, but it's it's using it's using raster data, so like images or yeah, okay, images or, or terrain or precipitation would be another layer. Okay.